It's a whole lot easier to move these chickens when they're already in the coop. So this electric fencing is fantastic. It allows you to move the chickens, keep them safe. Our removing things, I think there's a little bit of I guess tricks of the trade if you're not careful you can end up with this big snarl mass as the posts get put into different places so a lot of times what i find the easiest way to move this is grab one rod kind of fold the netting under itself pick up the next rod and just start holding all the rods in one hand and having the netting swoop down then you get to the next place you can just slowly start laying it out couple videos back we um, we ended up building this watering system we got the nipples on the bottom they're the ones I originally thought came out the side but are, these ones are specific for the bottom I'm gonna move away from this as you can see today I'm wanting to move this and what do I do with this bucket I can build like a 2 by 4 thing and another contraption to lug around to set this thing on because if I set this bucket directly on the ground those nipples are either gonna go into the dirt get dirty or potentially break off and I think what I'm going to do is go back. A lot of you guys mentioned the Amazon actually has the, the sells the nipples that are meant for going out the side. So I think I'll order up some of those and just move to a little bit more of that watering system. I just don't find this one as, as flexible for a system like this where I want to be very uh, mobile. I don't want to be lugging around a bunch of different things. Something to set the bucket on to keep the nipples off the ground. So... So we'll throw a couple of these extra supports in. If you look on these, this fencing, the black and the white is actually where the electric part is, not that these white ones going vertical. And if the fence gets saggy, and you can see it's a little saggy right here, that's where these extra supports come in. And just take the fencing up here, hold it up high, keeps it from grounding out, and then also just keeps the fence a little bit higher. Now for my favorite part, I love letting these guys out. It's so fun watching them come out in the morning. <laughs> This summer's been pretty fun raising uh, this batch of chickens. Last winter was the very first winter we actually had taken off, I think since we lived out here, the last six, seven years of raising chickens. And just a little bit of that time off, coming back, trying to improve on some things, changing up the coop, changing up the breed design. It's kind of breathed some new life or new excitement back into to raising chickens. So it's been a very fun year. The one thing I wish is we took better records in the past on food consumption of past breeds. And I know it's a little hard to compare apples to apples. Not the same breed. These guys are still growing, so their food consumption is still climbing. But I really do feel like we've made some good improvements. The chickens, I just feel like they're healthier, happier. 
moving them on to fresh grass every couple days. They get really excited every time we move them and they really work that, that place over quite a bit when we, we first get them onto that new thing. So it's been, I, I think, a, a pretty good system. I've been very, very happy with this. The one other thing that we're trying out, or just been doing a little bit of experiment, I shared this in the past video, was kind of the fodder system, sprouting stuff. We got some whole oats sprouting, and I had a couple little ups and downs here, and I thought maybe I'd give you guys an update on that real quick as well. So a couple of videos back, I showed you guys kind of the fodder system I was starting here. This is that bucket, the original one. It's got kind of the holes down here on the side right there. Pretty pathetic. Look at the amount of sprouts I had. I think what I ended up doing wrong is having these submerge in water too much. Um, but then I came back a couple of days later and started the next one here and made some minor adjustments. And boy, oh boy, what a difference that makes. Look at how thick and full this is here. Much better uh, turnout there. So I think one of my biggest failures was just keeping those submerged in water too much. So the way this system kind of works is you come and you soak your greens for 24 hours like this then you pour them off into a, sort of a, a strain type bucket like this and then you just come in and you water them one or two times a day like you would a plant uh, and then these things all stack with inside of each other so as you water it continues to go down and water the one under it and, and so forth so it helps save on water and uh, in the end you end up with something like this and the big part of the reason I'm trying to get something like this is as we move into the winter months and the grounds cover with snow I want chickens to have some fresh greens like this of course a lot of the nutritional value is it's much more they can absorb it a lot easier when they're they're eating it like this versus the whole grain and uh, and then your, your feed cost actually goes quite a bit further you know 50 pound bag of whole oats is equivalent to 150 pounds or I think I've even heard higher than that but uh, we'll, we'll really find out as we get a little bit further down the road on that so you can see I got the next batch going here this one's been soaking for 24 hours and we'll uh, pull this one out today and, and give access uh, to the chickens and see how they like it so we'll start the next batch here we got fresh oats coming here We'll fill that up with water. You can see that one's there. And then uh, we can just water these by setting them right on inside each other. You can see we got the start of our next one. This will sit for 24 hours and we'll dump it into another one of these buckets. Maybe I should note that these probably shouldn't sit out in the sun. You just kind of tuck them in the shade or uh, as we move into the winter, these actually probably sit down in the basement in the bathtub or something. Taking a closer look at this, you can see there's still a lot of seeds that are still not sprouted. So what I think I could do instead of using a full scoop is really cut that down a bunch. But if we wanted to, we could break this apart for them and uh, hopefully they enjoy this. So it's amazing sometimes just the small little tweaks like this can make life a whole lot easier, reduce costs, and I really think just a few of these little things that we've improved on this year have really made a pretty big difference. We've been quite pleased with it. Just a quick reminder, uh, August 12th and 13th, we're going to be down in Hannibal, Missouri at the Homesteading Life Conference. If you're going to be down in that area or attending the conference yourself, let me know. I'd love to have an opportunity to be able to meet up. Uh, hang out with some other like-minded individuals. I think it would be a lot of fun. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. <music>